The fishing show often looks at the life cycle of our fish and our fisheries. The barramundi is one of those fish that scientists know a lot about, but recent research shows that they may not know the full story. So I'm going to be fishing with a recreational fisheries researcher who's going to show us that there might be more to the barramundi life cycle than we currently know. So we've been coming out here a long time now, Bill, and sort of never knew any different when we were younger. But now we, we, we sort of come here and you fish here and, and, and you'll see over the next few days that the barramundi you catch here look different and behave different to the, to the fish yeah. that uh, we catch up river. The Daly River is a massive system and our plan is to fish it from top to bottom, from salt to fresh, and in our own empirical way, investigate how variable the barramundi life cycle is. We've always thought migration is an annual part of the cycle for nearly all the barra, but recent observations are starting to show that this might not be so clear cut. It's a dry season now, and if you follow the classic theory, the barra should all be upstream and not in the salt. So for the first part of our experiment, Peter's taken us about 50 kilometres up the daily from the mouth. This area is sort of a transitional area, uh, brackish, fresh water running over salt. We'll catch a few barra here and have a good look at them. And then we'll go back down to the salt water, catch some barra there and then compare the two. And it doesn't take long for Kane to get into the action. <laughs> nice. I actually had a snag. <laughs> Flicked it off the snag and the barra ate it. He must have been sitting underneath there looking, eh? He must have been. And barra are a very adaptable species. They're catadromous, which means they can happily live in fresh and salt water. And they're also uh, hermaphroditic. And that means all of them are born males. And when they get uh, to a certain length, probably about what, 700 millimeter yeah, or so, it's a bit hard to tell. About 800, they like About 800, say. they yeah. turn into females. And this one I would say, probably borderline, could be male or it could be female. It's probably around about 700, I'd say. 72. You know him, Bill? Ah, well done, Bill. Cool. We're on the board. Not a big one, but typical river fish. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, he'd be about a year old, judging on last year's wet season. He's probably spent most of his life in the river. You can tell by his tail, he's got a bit of a yellow tinge to it. Yeah, right, OK. And there's a bit of yellow on the gills here as well. So you're going to surmise he's a typical life cycle barra, probably goes up and down the river? I'd say so, mate. What you find in the river here is you get these areas where resident fish tend to hang out and you can catch them, the same fish, in the same spot year in, year out. And our, our fisheries tagging data has shown that. We're going to get this guy back in the water. He's the future of the fishery. So tell us a little bit about your thoughts about um, how these fish live on some of these snags in mid-river. I think we always had that, uh, that idea that we thought barramundi would go down, you know, 100 kilometres there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm sure they do, and they do sometimes, but time and again, you know, we're starting to catch 10, 20, 50, 100 barramundi that have tags in them, and they're being caught at the same location within 50 metres of where they were caught five years previously. And that's really interesting. Yeah, what do you reckon, about 55, 58, something like that? Yeah. Just on a year old. They're beautiful looking fish, aren't they? No matter what colour they are. They're very good looking fish. You can tell by the, that dark coloration of him. He's probably come out of that creek over there, which is spewing out the last of the water from this year's wet season. You can really see how dark this fish is here in the, in the fins, gold all over it here, yeah. yeah. Certainly does look different to those salt water fish, doesn't it? Yeah, well this guy's obviously found a lot of food up on the floodplain. Yep. It's where he's been for the last year, I'd say. Well, I reckon you better get this fish back in the water and we'll continue our pursuit. Sounds like a plan. We'll get him back in. Already we're seeing a few differences in the appearance of the barra here, but we need to travel the river more and the plan is to keep heading up, keep catching fish as we go, so we can pair these to what we might catch back at the mouth. So Peter, you're taking us up to the S-Bends. It's about, what, 70 kilometres up the river? And I happen to know this is, this is a big fish area, so 
maybe if anything this is a place where we might be able to get a big river fish and have a look at one of those barramundi. Well let's, let's hope so, that's what we're looking for mate. Woo good fish. Feels good. Feels good. Yep, yep. Yeah, good fish. Nice slab of barramundi. That's a boy. Nice. Oh, that's, that's the right. one. Classic Dr. Evil, down and dirty. Straight right away, mate. you can tell the difference between the one we got earlier down at the mouth of Lizzie and this girl. Obviously, the size difference, but. This is a lot cleaner fish. Hasn't spent much time up in the billabong of late. 80 centimetre fish, isn't it? Pretty close, mate. You're pretty good on your estimates. So okay. th this one would probably be a, a travelling fish, I'd say, wouldn't it? Mm. it you tend to find these uh, hanging schools, this, this sort of same size, and they move up and down the river depending on the tides, whether they're spring tides, they, they tend to come a bit further up on the neap tides. They, they, they drop back towards the mouth a bit more. And what have we got now? We've got the first building tides just coming out of the neap, so they're, they're moving up. They're starting to come back up the river again, so hopefully we, uh, we can release this one and maybe get one or two more. Before we go to the mouth, we're off to the upper reaches of the system where the freshwater dominates to see what sort of barra live there. And the water doesn't get much fresher or the scenery more beautiful than in these parts. Better. Here we go. Tell by the darker coloration he's spent a bit of time up here on the floodplains. There's plenty in here. Here's another one for you, Kane. There's your freshwater barra, boys. He's definitely a darker looking fish. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, not even a year old. But yeah, these fish will, will generally move in the in the school. Probably same school they were born. And I reckon they'd spend their life up in this freshwater reaches for most of their lives. Freshwater barra are very obviously golden in colour. And these fish look like they hold in schools up here for extended periods. Having seen a few of these fish, the cane believes spend most of their lives in the fresh. It's now time to head to the salt. And for me, the very best part, searching for big saltwater barra. And remember, the classic theory states that they shouldn't be there in June. Travelling back down this river system reminds us what a diverse ecosystem it supports. And one indicator of a healthy barra fishery is a solid crocodile population. And the population in the mid reaches here even impressed the experts, Kane and Peter. They had never seen so many crocs at one time. Well, have a look at this, Bill. We could hear some boat traffic, and as we've come out, this is what we've found. The commercial barra muddy fishermen have been here. They normally try and set their nets a couple hours before low tide. And as the tide comes back in, the commercial guys will come back and clean up their nets and pick them up and wait for the next tide. Now I guess the presence of pros netting well out in the salt water in the middle of June also indicates that they don't hold much on the theory that all the barra should be upriver in winter. So Bill, see we've got here this uh, rocky headland here. Yep. We're just trawling up and down this uh, line here in about eight feet of water and we're going to slowly make our way out closer and closer to that um, the cliff face there. See if we can't pick ourselves up a nice big barra mundi. And obviously saltwater barra, this is the sort of areas that they inhabit. Probably some permanent populations of saltwater barra live on these rocky headlands. Yeah, I've been fishing this spot here now for nearly, well, I suppose nearly 20 years. And we found that the, the, those size of barra, money, those 90 centimetre models, 80 centimetre models, tend to hang along these, uh, this same area here. Often if we trawl too much, we can come in and get two, three, four fish straight away, spook them. Yes, oh, there yes. we go. That's a good fish. There's, there That's we go. Good fish. Right on cue. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, they tend to sort of stay on a similar sort of size. There we go, That's mate. Nice yep. Fish. Yep, Bill. Might even have a tag in it. There's something in, the, in its really? back there. Yeah, it might have a tag in it. This way. Yeah, it's definitely got a tag. Yep. All right, Bill. Well done, mate. Couldn't well, eat him, maybe, Bill. <laughs> maybe a bit of a tag in him, too. Well done, mate. He's a sizable fish too. That's yeah, beautiful fish. Just watch your hands there. XOS saltwater barra. So as we we're just saying, we we're just talking about the sort of size of barra money that are, that are along this coast here. And they sort of tend to hang in the same or a similar type size. I think that the idea is that the big ones aren't bullying the little ones. Yeah, and, yeah. And they don't want to certainly be in that uh, environment. 
But um, yeah, look, beautiful looking saltwater fish Big measured chrome up. chrome unit. There you go, safety. <laughs> Always brings a smile to your face, doesn't it? Doesn't it? All right, here Thanks, you go, Pete. Bill. Nice oh, fish. No worries. <laughs> well, it's your fish. <laughs> Happy to catch it. Well, it's very interesting, actually. This is obviously a saltwater barra. It's like chrome as. Yeah. And Kane, you're the expert here. It's actually got a tag in the back of it. It does. So that may indicate that it may have been up in the uh, fresh at some stage. Well, it's a, it's a yellow tag, which is a fisheries tag, which we generally hand out to the Barra Classic competitors. Oh, OK. So what we can do is just record the number on this. Uh, I'll take it back get it checked in the database and we'll know exactly where it was caught, how long it's been at liberty and how and long how, it's been how out there. it's grown cool. in the time. You yeah. do that and let me know. And in the meantime, better let this guy go. Well done guys. Yes! Oh look at that. That's a good one. Well done Bill. Did he hit you hard Bill? Yeah. He smacked it did he? Yeah smacked it. And like you were saying it's heading back into those rocks. Yeah we're just reversing back slow. let the boat do some work. Sure. I reckon they fight a lot harder in the salt water than yeah. the fresh. Definitely, right? definitely these salt water models are a stronger fighting fish. They're gonna work so much, so much harder in this that. environment. Ooh, crack. Head up, head up. Well done, well done, Bill. Good fishing. Now that is awesome. <laughs> oh, good fish. Another nice good fish. That's another nice fish, isn't it? Oh, it's probably a bit bigger than the last one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we seem to catch the same size of fish. That's what's really interesting. Sometimes they're a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, but 80% of them are all that sort of size. I mean, what do you think, Bill? You caught some smaller models, but those oh, no, compared I to these things. This, this ran, pulled line, yeah, went hard. And they're very aggressive on the bite, yeah. on the strike. They really, yeah. they really want it, you know? And apart from the, uh, you know, bit of, bit of rock and coral in that down there, there's no snags or anything. So the only thing they can do is just run hard and try to rub you off on the rock. That's true. Good stuff. Thanks again, boys. No worries. Awesome. And I reckon we're probably at least half proved that maybe there is some of these resident fish in both the fresh and salt water. And I'm sure we'll learn more and more as years go on. So what did we learn from this? Well, the data from the tag barrow that we caught suggests that this fish has bucked the migratory trend and become a resident in the salt water, just as the researchers have found. It was originally tagged at the famous S Bends in May 2014 during the Barra Classic and had a length then of 57 centimetres. Now in June 2018 and at 81 centimetres, it's living 100 kilometres away down in the salt water around the coastal rocky headlands. So finally, what does that mean for us anglers? Well, it's obvious now that the Barra life cycle is in fact highly variable and that all the big barra don't just migrate to the salt and then spawn and leave. A lot stay there permanently. Essentially meaning that if you know where to look, big barra are a year-round proposition in the NT in a range of different environments.